These voices inside of my mind, they will try to drive me insane. But everything's fine if I try to remain like powder cocaine. Yeah, I'll be fine like powder cocaine, and that's a hell of a drug, and that's a hell of a saying. They need elephant trunks to get it off of the plate. I want to better myself. They want to dwell in the pain. I want to better my health. No umbrella for rain. And that's a hell of a bug. I want to live in my dreams. Got an ocean in mind. They want to settle for streams. I want to settle for more. I want to get knocked down so I could settle the score. Better than before as if that was possible. To shake the demons of my mother in the hospitals. Drove to a mansion and wrote this shit in front of it. Because everybody covets the comfort of us becoming it. Rich. And that's a hell of a drug. I caught a hell of a dream. I caught a hell of a bug. Fuck the relevant themes. I've been moving at the speed of my life. Ignorant to the price. I'll be fine like powder cocaine. These voices inside of my mind, they will try to drive me insane. But everything's fine if I try to remain. Thank you for making the time for for. Of course, our, dude. It's an honor to be here, bro. Yeah, man. It's uh, I I mean, my co-host isn't here because he it was his son's birthday today. Um, so I'm gonna Thank do this you. one. Yeah, man, I'm going to do this one solo. I, you know, just a huge admirer of your work, man. You know, like um, being that you you label a lot of your your videos with with your name, Goldwatch. So w- welcome, Jason Goldwatch, obviously. Hello, um, <laughs> um, it's 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 that common theme. And you put, you know, through the years, you put pieces together. And I'm like, oh, this dude is like crazy with the visuals. And I'm, I'm an MTV child. Right. right. So like I'm, I'm 43. So like I grew up you know, with the tail end, the eighties and the nineties. So to me, and I'm a musician, I play in a band still like, so it's like music and visuals are so important to me. Um, I think, man, like YouTube, like YouTube is just amazing now. You know, I obviously MTV was a great curator, but I I feel like uh, YouTube is, is just beyond now. Um, so it's, it's a trip for me to kind of just acknowledge and love the shit that you do. Fuck yeah. Thank you very much, man. I appreciate it um so as a child of of mtv myself and growing up with videos um i mean is that something that you grew up with too like the love of that stuff like like i know that music is a big part of your life did you ever play in a band did you ever want to play or man i i want to be in a band i want to join a gang i want all that shit dude it just never occurred to me i mean this first piece i just put out which i sent you yesterday this thing no god for robot is actually the first time i mean in, in the since college really that I made my own soundtrack and my own pictures, you know what I mean? Together. So ah, yeah. I don't know. I'm trying, dude. I'm not in a band yet, but I'm doing my best. My one man band. But you know, the thing with you, so like um you in life you always hang out with someone who's like recording shit. You know? So Me? or in life. No, just in life, like in life, man, there was always like, it's like, oh, it's like, this is our friend, like we're skateboarding, he's going to video shit. And I feel like you you were definitely in on on the on the ground level of of like, just recording stuff, you know, so that's something that you took to and for the most part, that that makes you just as important as anything else, because you're documenting this stuff like, like, remember, uh, I don't know if you watched that, um, LA original that that Estevan uh, Oriole documentary, of course, of course, my brother, God damn, that shit was like, so he's yeah. like documenting all this stuff because he took all this footage and he put it together and he's nice with the. Yeah, vision. he was the forerunner of this whole thing for sure. He, uh, you know, there's a Cypress Hill documentary right now he's putting together. Yeah. Um, that he's basically been shooting for fucking forty years or whatever. You know what I mean? Like maybe that's an exaggeration, but like, yo, he's he's the original. He's the originator of what I think a lot of people are doing right now. He just doesn't get the credit for some fuck reason. You know, I, I, I kind of wasn't really too hip to him till that documentary, and which is weird yeah. being such a big like Cypress Hill fan. Uh, I just had Eric Bobo on the show, man. He, he's mad right. cool. Um, right. But yeah, like so, you know, some people just document stuff, man. And I feel like I know that you went to uh, the school like what was that San Francisco school you went to? School of the Arts. Yeah. Yeah, man. So like I feel like you were just at that ground level. So like growing up in the bay or san francisco from like i'm from new york i'm from long island and sometimes i romanticize the west coast the way maybe i feel like some people do on that side to new york um so i've never been there but like so what was it like growing up in in frisco 
it was wild. It was wild, dude. It was fucking wild. And I think San Francisco gets a funny reputation because all this tech stuff and because of like the fancy homosexual thing that happens there. But it's like, bro, it was wild, man. I was a real minority in that fucking place. And we got chased around. I got whooped up. I got beat down. I fucking got tagged over. It was a wild one. But I think it made me, I have a son now. We're just talking about this. Like, it made me a special kind of fucked up that I think I, it works out for me. And like, I don't know how to reproduce that with another one with it, with my son, you know, but San Francisco was in the nineties, amazing. And um, the graffiti that came out of there and sort of, there was a little bit of lawlessness that was allowed. It was a rave culture that was happening and like a drug culture that was popping off and like cannabis. It was a really special time in the, in the Bay during the nineties for sure. Yeah, and and, and uh, like the hip hop stuff too. But I mean, obviously, I'm a metalhead too. So like, you know, like all that thrash shit was like born out of there. Um, you know, Metallica, Exodus, and all that, all that cool shit. But like on, on the flip side of that was like the hip hop stuff. And I feel like, um, like the DJ Shadow Crew, the Hyro Crew, and all uh, crew and all that other stuff was just kind of like popping off at the same time. It's like the magical dude. All that, all that. The Bay was popping. I know that was right. You know, I was in high school in 93 and like I had, the, you know, I had uh, infinity, bro. I had the, like, the yeah. red cassette, man. Like it changed my life. Those dudes changed so, my. Yeah. Changed my life. Um, I got like some still, you know, I, that, that so that record, I, I remember walking around with a Walkman and, and yep. w- when I was in high school and I had the Grave Diggers first album and then I had 93 till infinity yep. and and people some people don't really even understand how deep that record is. It's not a bad song on there. Like, it's just like from beginning to end. Like, I mean, yeah, I, used to have the, I used to have my Walkman to play at the end of the tape and then switch sides without me having to take the tape out with yeah. some fancy shit. And I used to just listen to that tape over and over, over, and, and, over, over. and over and over. Yeah, yeah, Dude, yeah. Amazing. That, Such a good time. Yeah, for sure. And, and, and a lot of that stuff, like, uh, I, I feel like once we're into art, so it's like, you know, like I play music. So you always meet someone who starts a zine someone who makes videos someone who books shows so it's like this like big collective um and and i know that somewhere along the way um you were making some videos and then you like ran into like mad child right some shit like that yeah 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 yeah. in san francisco on 8th street man yeah just doing the graffiti thing my boy's playing a deli he got permission to do for free so they bought him some paint we're chilling yeah and uh yeah he was passing out mixtapes and this was before before swollen this was, yeah, 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 this was, uh, well, let me get that right. I guess this, well, yeah, this is before Swallow members, for sure. And he was uh, a solo artist at that point. He was part of a crew from Canada called, uh, man, don't blow this. Uh, I'm not going to remember now, but he was part of a crew with Flip Out, and they were um, just kind of bubbling. So he was in San Francisco passing out mixtapes. It was dope. We linked. Um, you know, I've told this story so many times, but he became an old friend of mine and then connected okay. me when I came down to Los Angeles with evidence and dilated and yeah, yeah, that yeah. sort of tied me into the Los Angeles. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, and you know, ever since then, I, I know like the dilated crew and and a lot of the video work that you've done, which which I think is I, I know I messaged you via like the band page on Instagram and I told you I, I looked it up. It was like March 11th, 2020. Um, I, I think you're one of the best video filmmakers of all time. And, and I'm yeah, someone, like I said, I'm telling you, I'm t- like, I'm someone who to this day, like I, I, I stay up on the videos. Right. So um, the work that you did with evidence in particular, man, like to me, when I first saw it to be continued, it's so like it's like the beginning. It's like the essence of like DIY. Right. But it's just so cool. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, so where'd you guys yeah, yeah, film I love that? that. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. We, uh, well, me and Evidence have this unique synergy. We tend to make great shit no matter what happens, you know? So, I don't know, to be continued also, uh, I mean, everything we've done, I guess, to be honest, but that's a great one. Um, that was just a matter of getting my shit together. That was right when I came to LA. I left New York. I lived in New York for like 11 years, 12 years. So that was right when I came home. It's funny I just said that. So when I came back, I guess it's my home. And I was like, all right, let me pull my dick out. I've been in New York doing, you know, like Roots, Jim Jones, fucking Cuddy, uh, you know, every just on my New York shit out there. And came here and was like, all right, let me fucking be on some West Coast shit. So I wanted to really just perform and really be a director um, for that particular one because that was my first one back here. So I really oh, felt was like, it? I to, like I said, just pull my dick out. Yeah, it was like a, it was a return to the West for me. And it was an important moment because I was by myself out here, so. Man, I, I got to tell you, um, so like I, I've been a, a dilated fan for a minute and, and I like them. 
and I felt like evidence was good, but I just feel like he's hit a peak lately. I feel like he's just like the last two records yeah, yeah. have been like, just like he's like, he's on another level right now. Um, but to go back to the video, like that, that, that video in particular, like I'm a, I'm a big um, amusement park fan, you know? So it's like to just watch something so cool. Like anytime I want to show videos, that's one of the videos that I show. Um, because it's oh, yeah. so, it's just, I, oh, why is so, that amusement park shit? That's so interesting. What, what is it? Why is that some amusement, amusement park shit? What do you mean? Oh, I'm, I'm saying like it was on a roller coaster. Circus. Oh, got you. Got you. Got you. Got you. Yeah. It was on a roller coaster. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So, That's um, so yeah, I mean, and, and to me, like, I, I just, I love that part of it. I, and the, and, uh, how many times, like, I obviously he had to like time it. So like the, he wrote, he wrote it. It took a times. couple. It took a couple. You know, it was just a matter of getting it right. It's one of those things where it's like, if you have a good idea, you, a net, you just make sure you get it right. And you're good. You know, that's sort of how most of my videos, although they're not like one takes like that, but I go and know creatively. It, we're, I've got trust and we got a little bit of net and we're good. Let's fuck around. And that kind of like taking a left turn off of the momentum type of course, you're getting off of the river onto the river bed or sort of, taking a turn when it's not expected or, or making something change. I don't know how to really put this into words new sort of to articulate, but letting the magic enter a room by, by opening the window, so to speak, you can get a yeah. lot more stuff than if you just did regular shit, which was sort of the momentum of life. So it's sort of a weird new practice I'm doing. And like I said, I'm just learning how to talk about it. But again, like if you can just create a safety net where the idea is good enough and then just take a fucking strong left turn and let things occur, you tend to get like, real magical sort of wizardry wheeled weird like a i mean almost you know to for lack of a better term like alchemist type of stuff where things occur out of two things that shouldn't be together type of things you know which is kind of like what the stuff that you sent me right uh like sure i like that yeah, yeah i mean that's just me getting dark bro like this covid thing is inside of my brain matter so that's just me really processing i guess externally what the what's going on i mean I don't know. It's a weird time. Yeah. So, and music videos, what are those, dude? You know, what happened? I don't know. So it's sort of like a turn for me where I'm going to make my own music. You can call it a music video, but it's just a film to me still, you know? No, for sure. Like uh, the, the, the thing that you sent me, um, uh, no God for robot. Right. Yeah. So that, that, that's like probably like 16, 17 minutes and stuff like that. Um, and it's just, it's kind of like, like a trip, man. Like, uh, so how, how is like, uh, the covid i mean so covid for the most part like you know like last year like you get you do get to be a little bit creative right because you're working from home and you're doing that stuff and then yep. from there you know so like how did that project uh, like come about well it gets us into an interesting conversation i think because what i'm pushing for here is like video samples like tell me i'm wrong dude but i watch you know evidence a great example like he can go get some drums and sample the horn and then like this is actually a legal process for clearing that particular piece of music right those whatever two bars or whatever it may be sure there's nothing like that for me i sample audio which i suppose is i could license but any video i find or any old vintage super eight i'm using there's no way to legally yet sort of set that up and clear it you know what i mean so to me it's an interesting place where i'm just banging my fucking pots and pans in the kitchen like Yo, until you tell me different, I'm going. Like, we're going to go. And, like, Evidence, we did another uh, project with him, and with him and Slug where we just, I just totally stole a commercial. And it's like, we still get away with it. So, I don't know. It's an interesting place where I'm messing with samples. And so, when I got I love it, I love that commercial. I love Hell that yeah, commercial. right? Yeah, yo, that, ho that, that, first of all, because I, I love that knife song. That knife song's a banger, <laughs> right? But, like, Jose Gonzalez did such a really good job on it. And, like, the, but it's cool, man. Like, you, like, the, um, uh, the, the cocaine song, I forgot the, what's it Powder called? Cocaine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So like, man, like what, what a great video. I mean, I, but it, you did it with the pill. So it's like, the right. Pill. Flipped it. That's the rule too. When I steal footage is a rule. It's like, you got to have some sort of respect in terms of like, I'm not going to, I would never take that footage and be like, Oh, look at all the balls we spilled. You know what I mean, it's like, if it's flip it and use it for your own or else it's not a sample anymore. You're just stealing it. Right. So like, if they're, if they sort of put it into your own context to recontextualize it. So that at least you're clearing it with the brain legal department. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you put your your own spin on it for sure. Yeah, exactly. It's like it's a collage, it's, it's, you know. It's just collage at this point. It's a collage, and like with the tools that you have now, like technology is wild now. You you can, you know, it's like this. It's this. I guess it's like digital sampling. Of yeah, like, for sure. Know, it's like, crazy. Like, you know what else? For a visual person like myself, I had to wait for the web to catch up, man. I had to wait for these. Like, I have a fat cord coming out of my cable. I'm not using Wi-Fi, but even then, it's like, man, it's a little hard. I remember uh, 
Alchemist told a great story. He's like, yo, Goldwatch now, if he wants a wet cat, he can go find a wet cat. He doesn't have to go fucking shoot it. You know? So it's like, it's true, yeah. man. It's like, man, that snare sounds like some sloppy belch. Like, can I go find a drunk sloppy belcher in the 90s? Yes, dude, pretty easily now. You know what I mean? And so it opens up this world of like, all right, now I can finally make films that sort of look like how I see them in my head instead of, man, I can't really license the desert and the cat out there because the cat gets too hot. So like, fuck, you know, but now I can just create, create as I wish. And, uh, I, I, you know, in the email, you know, you, you told me that, that, you know, probably somewhere in the near future, you're, you're planning to do a, a, a screening of this in a particular place. Is that true? Yeah, I can't wait. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I grew up right 90s raving and fucking um, exploring that adventure. And so that sort of led to a bunch of parties out in the desert, man, where like they would set up a real solid sound system against some rocks. And it was like the, the most solid bass sounding, you know, stuff you've ever heard. Now they didn't, they weren't projecting anything, but like, yo, like, we're going to take that to a level where you can go have this experience out in the desert. You know what I mean? If there's only 15 kids, God bless those 15. That's all we need. Like I miss yeah. those kind of experiences, you know? Yeah, 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 for sure. And, and the yeah. thing is, is too, like whenever you have like, a, like, you know, um, especially like, I'm going to, I'm going to push it to like a festival setting uh, or like a big show. Like sometimes like when you're watching someone perform music, if, if it's too big a venue and there's no visual, sometimes you kind of like you yeah. zone out. I saw I saw the Beck tour like he did two years ago for the for the album Colors, right? And the shit was crazy. Yeah, better like, be. That's cool. Yeah, it was like he just it was one of the best visual shows I've seen up there with like the Flaming Lips, where it's like right. you're you're there, but it's like and the music is there, but it's like beyond the music. At right, that you point. had to be there for sure. Yeah, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so I think you know music videos sort of lack that right now. At least what I'm seeing is sort of like everyone's. You know, the, the video camera arrived with a thud and sort of the editing systems arrived with the fucking punk thud and everyone thinks they can shoot and edit now. So like these music videos are a watered down lake of just mediocrity. So I think a lot of people in, a, in almost a response to that have taken their live shows to a place where they're just, you just can't butts with it. Like that's just, you know. Nah, yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, once again, like your, your, your style, I'm going to, I'm going to bring up another one, uh, the Jim Dean video. Yeah. Like that video is crazy. That's yeah, in all honesty, when you just said TBC, I thought you were talking about Jim Dean. Like, that's the one when I came from New York <laughs> and was like, damn, I really got to put something down on this one, you know? The, no, the you TBC was actually Ev's idea. Now that we're going back, that was his idea. Okay. He's like, what if we did a one take? And I'm like, that's really fucking smart, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, but TBC, yeah. that just kind of happened. That took a lot of timing, whatever. But yo, the big dick was, Jim, I'm talking, that's what I'm talking about, Jim Dean, where it's just like, yeah. bro, let's lay it down yeah. right now, you know? Yeah, that you laid it so hard. Yeah, oh, that song's fucking great, man. Like yeah. that, that, that was um, that record was my favorite hip hop record of 2018 for yeah, sure. Um, but like, and also, like, I've been on this trip just shooting other than Pasadena, just like a little north of LA towards the mountains. And like, I've been shooting, I shot a you know, I shot uh, the Conway video out here. I shot a gang of videos just trying to sort of capture Pasadena, dude. I think it's just a beautiful place. And sort of as a photographer, it's almost like a group of work for me where I'm just kicking it out here shooting um we said rock marcy out here it's just interesting there's a lot of beautiful stuff out here to take advantage of that people don't really do so and it's also like a pasadena tip where we need evidence we're underneath that bridge that's the same bridge we shot conway under you know it's like it's interesting yeah, no, out here. you yeah completely you know you just got a great eye for it and i think it's just like through the years of doing what you do you know and it's funny like all the technology you know every decade you get a little bit of more um but that that record in particular like i, I made some uh like I love with the grenade at the end, right? Like right, totally. it was just such a like trip, you that know. Is. I'm just thinking like it was just such a like action movie move with all the t-shirts on there. Right. So right, right. <laughs> that, you was, know? that was a fun one. That was a tough one too, where the same thing was like I had bookends in my notes. But the in-between, we had to sort of figure it on the road. So Ev, you know, I guess saw me with the notes and fucking high as fuck trying to get through it and figure it out, make sure all the things met. Cause like there was no full takes in that video. It was like, make sure your bookings match. Or you're, you know, you're obviously I covered a little bit, but like, bro, that was a real trust your trust your skill set director shit. Yeah, I remember yeah. I sent it to Ab once it was all pieced together and it worked. And he was like, bro, who the fuck are you? Like, he saw the madness and he didn't know how it was coming together. And he saw it put together. I was like, wow, that's like the perfect, you know, yeah. cohesion. No, nah, no, nah, for sure. You know, especially like for that, for a song like that that's so banging to come out with a video like that that's just like, extra crazy and uh man it's just great so uh 
as far as like uh you know like the the newer evidence stuff i i know he just put out a new record did, did you make any of those we did we're working on we're working on something together i've been so busy and trying to get to a different place in terms of taking these music videos to an art place i haven't been doing a lot of music videos so i've been sort of um lucky enough to be slammed right now so him and i working there's nothing coming out yet we have a couple songs that are sitting here that aren't edited that we shot yeah it's some funny experimental shit with the sun and it's pretty cool i don't want to blow it up too much but yeah it's coming dude we me and that guy forever you know forever forever and you know yeah. I, when i met him honestly mad shot introduced us i was a teenager dog i'm 40 I'm about to be 45 so he's one of the oldest human beings i've known that i'm still in touch with even forget everything else you know yeah, that's that's a trip crew too, because sometimes I hear like Scott Kahn get thrown in there because oh of yeah, the, he's around the, for sure. The, the hooligan, right? Was it the hooligans? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it's just uh, some old LA Beverly Hills. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, dude, they're, they're they all went to high school together. It's a, it's the illicit. And yo, we were talking. I was like, this is a documentary. Every I hear more and more stories from who they hung out with or whatever, whatever. I'm like, bro, who's gonna make this fucking Beverly Hills 1991 doc, bro? Because goddamn, there's so many well, talents that came out of there. Yeah. Um. Did you did you watch that? Uh. You know. Sometimes I go into these like uh, time warps. <laughs> you know. Uh, brought by videos and and uh, I watched the Kid Ninety thing on Hulu that um, Soleil Moon Moon Fry. So she like you know Punky Brewster and all that other shit. It was so she, hot. Yeah. She filmed everything. That's cool. So she filmed like I'm talking about from back then to like thirty years of her life. Oh and Soleil. She, and she somehow like pieced it all together and put it up on Hulu. It's called Kid oh, 90. Miss Moonfry. I gotta go check that out. I had a crush on her forever. Yeah, no, it's crazy. Like, Don't cancel me. She had the most beautiful boobs, though. When I was growing up, that was the first crush I had. Because I was like, oh, mother of God, what is happening to my... Yeah, Sensu. she she mentioned she mentioned that the, the whole uh, you know boob thing for sure. And uh, man, just like you, so you see like the connection of everyone there, man, and, and like Danny Boy from House of Pain, like just this whole world. You know, the whole Soul Assassins, and you know what else? Speaking yes. of Esteban, like he was the first guy who was there, and this is part of the thing I was trying to insert just as an, as a director into his film, sort of just whatever my opinion. But like he was the first guy who was like there on the ground with a camera that was part of the band, like. You've seen Woodstock, whatever, where they're backstage, but it never, it felt like someone was there. You could tell they glance over the camera. It feels funny. Like Esteban was the first time where he was crew and he was inside. So it was this whole new perspective. That's what inspired me so much about his stuff. I was like, man, him and Ricky Powell, you know, rest in peace. I was like, dude, those are the guys that are part of the crew, crew that are inside, that are allowed. It's like celebrated that they're shooting. And I, you know, I was at a concert and it was uh, at the Fillmore in San Francisco. It was a uh, Cypress Hill. House of Pain and the Beastie Boys, dog. And Beastie Boys came out and they said, homeboy, throw in the towel. Your girl got, got dicked by, by Ricky, Ricky Powell, Powell, bro. And he came out and I was like, holy fuck, that's Ricky. And he had a camera and he had a beard and he was spilling it. And I was like, that's who I want to be. I don't want to be a rapper, dude. I want to be the visual. Like, it just blew my mind. And so from that moment on, I was like, all right, I see how this is going to work. And I was already taking pictures and painting and shit, but like, that was a path for me then at that point. Well, you did. So, I mean, because I, I think you did the, the dilated tour, but you also did um, the Def Jux, uh, Revenge yeah, of the Robot. Because yeah. I was, yo, so, you know, obviously as, as a New Yorker, like I was there and I remember the opening of that video where LP is like, yo, New York, you are not like the rest. Yeah, right, I right. was there at that show. And I rem right. I always remembered him saying that because in my head, I'm like, so powerful. I think you're right. <laughs> and it was ill because he came home. I think that that show was at the end of the tour. It was so at the end. It was at the end. Yeah. Of being home. It was extra po like poignant and pungent because they're just like so glad to be back in the thick of it, you know? Yeah. He was like, yo, we just been, did a tour for five weeks and it's, he's like, yeah, New yeah. York City. It's so We're good on some to be other home. shit. Yeah. 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 And that was, yeah, yeah. that was George Bush. We thought the world was on fire then, bro. Holy no, crap. Yeah. He was, he was nothing. Want him back, dude. I mean, yeah. I mean, <laughs> no, totally. Jesus. You know? But you, so you were that you were in that position then for for the for 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 the Def Jux stuff as well as like the dilated stuff, you know. I mean, would you consider yourself? I mean, you're the visualizer at that point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, again, it was a, it was just a, a step underneath Esteban where I was lucky enough to be in a place where I was in high school with cameras. It was early. It was we were the first graduating class from that program. Yeah. And like you said, man, Soleil Moon Fry, God bless her body, bro. She recorded everything. It's so smart, man. And these were the first human beings to be aware enough. Yeah. And we're like, yo, there's something to this. Almost like time travel. I hate to say that. There's something to recording a moment and letting it, it was before podcasts. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like the only the only place that really happened was photography where you could look at a, a moment sort of in time. 
it's a real sure. interesting thing and like to be on tour is obviously full of you know all the magic and music and, and phenomenon that happens but still it's a moment of being like yo we're just gonna capture real life and make art out of that it's a real thing you know and they were the first guys to do it i really gotta check out her film that sounds cool but i consider myself coming in now coming into cuddy and touring with cuddy for years and traveling around the world for Pharrell. it was a practice where you're on you're on the road i'm in south africa with Pharrell getting paid to capture moments you're constant i can't blow this right so you're constantly open 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 trying to find it trying to find it and it's like just your brain eventually becomes a source of like weird you know i can't pay taxes or pay or you know if i can get lost trying to get to my favorite restaurant but like bro in those <laughs> moments i'm pretty good dude you know, yeah well that's that. that's your thing man that's that's yeah, like that's one, of a, your... one of a few that i'm good at but like yo i i appreciate that yeah man, so I... it's a thing it's almost a practice a meditation practice i would encourage just to get this message out more is like people hit me like how do i become a director how do i follow your path They're like you know give me a tip i'm like Jack, it's so our lives everyone's life is so different i even believe that we are living in different like dimensions where i'm what i experience is different than you in this place we're together and by some weird circumstance so i don't know how to answer that but like that part of it is the only thing i can say we just go there like just bro left you know go left yeah yeah How's that makes sense no no yeah i mean it just <laughs> You know, sometimes, you know, it's it's some some people could, could make that shit work. And it's like um, I think you you surround yourself with some really talented people and you're talented. And, and I think you guys all fed off each other. And yeah, for sure. You know, and that's yeah. even the gangrene stuff. To me, that's some of the most fun stuff we've done. And like that's oh, a, okay. that's a, yeah, it's a perfect example of like pure trust. Like and even to be honest, the, the film I sent you with me and Al, it's that 20 minute joint cycles was where I was yes. like, yo, I made a 20 minute soundtrack to a film that doesn't exist. If you make the film and you go gold, if you go ham gold watch, if you go gold watch on this thing, because we'll split it right down the middle. Let's go hard. I was like, oh my God, it's interesting. And yeah. I listened to it. There's no drum, there's no rapping. It's all synth. It's like a wild left turn for Al. So we created that just out of that practice of like, yo, let's just go. It was, it was so unlike anything he's ever done that so, you wrote ALC. And I was like, it's gotta be. Right, right. Thinking. And then at the end, I see his name. I was like, okay, because it was so like, yeah. it's yeah, such yeah. a like next level, like it's just something completely different, yeah, you man. know? So it was like, we screened that. I finished it and, and shot down to Al studio and um, action was there in the, in the studio room. And so we just washed it down. And when it was over, it's like, I don't know, 18 and a half minutes or whatever. So it's not short, you know? Okay. What, no one said it's... anything. Action got up, uh, hugged Al. Gave me a salute and walked out of the room. We assumed, I don't know where the fuck I assumed, but he left, bro. He dipped. And then yeah. I was like, hold up, he left. And it was this funny ass thing where I was like, man, you know, our evidence even said, yo, that's, let me get this right. He goes, that's, a, that's my favorite thing you two have ever made, but I never want to watch it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> was it skinny action? No, no, it was big, fat ass action. Oh, yeah. <laughs> God bless him, man. It's incredible, right? Yeah, absolutely, man. Like, well, you know, like going, going to like, uh, you know, one of the videos that I have down is just, man, when strict, strictly for my Jeeps, the Jeeps drop, um, it was just such a, I don't know. I, I thought, I thought, I think it really just like took off right away. And once again, you see just gold watch up on there, man. Like yeah. a, any memories of making that video, that video. Is yeah, of shit. course. That was so much fun. I mean, I don't know. So many, that was the first time a Jeep pan had been, it was like when babes were first popping, we we're all tripping. We could smoke in the movie theaters. So that was a funny thing to like, be the first G Pen sort of ambassador. Yeah, yeah. Um, that big super rad woman we had um, was like a real famous um, plus size model, and so there was a lot of funny energy between all them. And uh, I guess she had a bad back, and um, she was like, "Listen, it's all good. Just don't, don't, don't like lift me up or do anything crazy because I have back problems." And like first take, uh, what's his name? Just jumped on her, like jumped onto her back as if he was like riding her, and it was like, like, "Oh my God, today's gonna be the." today's gonna be wild if we get through it, it'll be great but like i did there's a whole negotiate like an hour down of negotiating that that wouldn't happen again type shit when yeah a right. big body jumped on her big body like, big body yeah yeah for sure yeah, that, fun, that, that, that dude is like naturally quick and, and witty like it's crazy like when you hear i always admire when, when i hear like people that are just fast on their feet and like yeah, they always yeah, come yeah, up yeah. what's funny too it's like thing. as much as filmmaking entered um sort of a musical or hip-hop whatever you call this uh visual world there's a thing i'm watching now which i'm getting involved in which is like comedy coming out of hip-hop now where it's like that quick on your toes shit you're talking about and almost like battling how much is a battle how much is a roast it gets into this funny place where i think comedy now is sort of coming around where a lot oh, of yeah? us are bored with rap and oh yeah i am i'm like 
I don't care about your fucking stacks, dog. Like, just answer your stack, hang up and get back to me because these dudes are here being funny and clever and it's like, great. And there's a thing about battling that I miss where it's like, there's a camaraderie. It's not about fucking each other up. It's about a mutual respect where you've entered a place with someone that like, you can burn on each other and it's comfortable. Like, I miss you all can that. Burn. Yeah, yeah, you know, for sure. Yeah, definitely. Like, the comedy is a place I think where it's still like, you know, this world's a funny place right now. I'm careful what I say more than I used to be, but like comedy should be a place where things are safe. And oh, yeah. there, by entering that realm, it's like everything, anything goes. It may not be funny. That's okay. But don't get offended in like, at the comedy store, you fucking douchebag. Like, nah, 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 nah. But there's a place, all. theoretically, where comedy can exist right now where a lot of other things can't. So it's interesting. I, I, think, um, I think it just depends on who, man. Like some people, I, I, I almost don't even know people that exist that get offended by shit you know what i'm saying like I, to me it's almost like they're like a, a a a thought an idea on the internet like i don't i've never met anyone in person that was like you know louis ck offended me you know what i'm saying like yeah. it's just it's just like kaiser sozi type shit where it's just like well, i've been with comedians and said some off the wall shit and offended them and made a point oh. out of it but it's like god damn yeah. really i just broke that fucking wall that's crazy but like you know it's a sensitive world man it's funny i don't know it's weird right now i don't like it yeah, yeah, no. I mean, I, I, you know what? You're you're someone who has a fan base and you have eyes, right? So anything I say, for the most part, like you know, like I, I just don't have the audience you have. So it's like the bigger the audience or the bigger the eyes on you, like people. Some people, you know, uh, if if what you say reaches ten thousand people, maybe two out of those ten thousand would be like, I don't like that. You know, like mm-hmm. to me, it's like I'm I, I, I live, I guess, <laughs> in a in a more obscure world, I guess. I mean, I just got my fucking Twitter back. dude. That's just been gone for a year because I got shut down to, by a hacker. Right. Okay. Who got into my account, unfollowed everyone, erased everyone and then left. And then it took me a year to get it back. It wasn't a hacker. I don't know what you want to call that or I'll be careful how I talk about it. But I got real canceled by Twitter just for being a loud mouth. And like I wasn't really saying too many crazy things, but like. I'm not spoken about what I believe. And I think there's a lot of things that kids should know about. I think I would hope coming from me, it has a little more relevance than some stupid link you can't trust or whatever. I do my due diligence in terms of spreading what I think is important. And, you know, being careful about not losing my Instagram uh, account and fans and fan base and communication. For sure. And, I, I, you know? I, yeah, IG is definitely like a, a big one uh, to, to just, Tricky, you know, dude. yeah, man. Um, But it's, <sighs> I, I, I don't What's know. up with your podcast? Can we say vaccine, vaccine, terrorism, vaccine, fucking blood cell? Can you get your shit canceled? Have you guys had trouble? Or you're not even on that shit. No, vaccine, no, no, vaccine. No, 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 we're not. We're not. Fucking crazy. It doesn't, doesn't really matter. We talk. This 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 podcast is just um, we have a lot of guests on. We talk music, movies, pop culture. Uh, and, um, you know, like we we have a lot of a lot of interesting guests, you know, there's I mean, some fuck. Cool shit. It's a crazy world right now. I wish more people were talking about it and not afraid to get their social accounts. You know, deleted. it's, you know what it is. It's, it's like, sometimes it's, it's the pylon. If you say something, then 10 people in like, I don't know, fucking Ohio that don't even know the story will be like, yeah, this is bullshit. And then they put, like, well, I mean, dude, just- even for me as an artist coming from, I was just making music videos innocently because that I just fell in love with the whole process. But like now, all my biggest i can't post the kanye video i can't post my jay-z videos i can't post my kid cutty videos I can't oh why because the, the second i post them i get flagged for uh posting sony's content or posting universal music groups content i get flagged and it gets pulled and i get checked really it's fucked up yeah it's wild so that's why you know a lot of my on my instagram i don't have like i'm posting all this funny shit we made where i know that it's it's out of me which is my, some of my favorite shit honestly but like i can't be posting kid cutty shit that i've done i have new shit i can't post even because that just gets flagged and I'm out and that's it. And then my account's fucked up. And it's like, damn, son. Didn't you do the, the, the Cuddy one where it's like, uh, I mean, I don't have it listed, but it was like a, wasn't it like the Jimi Hendrix one? <laughs> like, yeah, Race Me. Yeah, with Kanye. Yeah, I can't yeah, post yeah. that. I get pulled. That's so wow. crazy. Sucks, right? Totally. Yeah. That shit was like 70 million views, dog. I can't fucking claim it on my thing. It's wild, you know? Wow, that's fucked up. Like, can you, like, because they don't want you to monetize it, I guess? I wish I knew. I mean, I'm so dark. I'll tell you what I think, but I'll get canceled. It's just like fucked up, man. It's just like, I don't know. Why Why can't, you know, I don't know. Why can't you post? Why? Yeah. Like, tell me. I don't know. I mean, in a way, I mean, people know you and your work. I mean. Well, that's part of that name shit. You know, it's like, all right, let's just 
put it down. If I'm going to, I'm going to go soon. I promise you. And I love that you sort of appreciate it. I'm going to try so hard to make everything. I'm going to try so hard to make it interesting. Right. And worth the wait and like worth it for you. So by me putting my neck out so far, at least give me a wink or a nod or a high five. I mean, you can put my name on that thing. At least let that last. And it's worked. You know what I mean? The, working that hard and, and putting that flag down for 20 or so years has with my name on it every time is now, you know, I go watch a relatively easy thing to remember. I'm not Robert Schlamalamp where you just can't remember it. I mean, it just happens to be blessed, but that continual just chipping away at the same fucking standing, sanding the same stat, the same marble piece eventually, you know? Yeah. It's yo, real beautiful. It's your, like your involvement, even like with, with a, a, a bitten, I always forget his name, bitten bender. Yep um like just a lot of the work that you've been involved in man like the, the decon stuff uh the mass appeal connection like it's just like you are part of like this world that really like the quality level is crazy like the shit that, that comes out of those worlds the ac alone stuff just yeah, like yeah, yeah. the cutty stuff like like all that stuff man it's like you you're all the work that you put in is just there. And it's like, it, it's crazy. Like the, the, just the, the importance that, that someone like you is to like the culture of hip hop. video I love, making. I can't tell you how much I love that. Um, yeah, it's just, it's fast. You know, just, it's just, a, yo, and I wish I was, I wish I had heard myself say this before, but like, if you want to be a cat breeder, dude, go be a cat breeder, but just don't stop until, you know what I mean? Just, just, that's what they should be teaching in school. Like, yo, what are you interested? Oh, stamps? All right, dude, let's draw stamps. Let's study stamps. Let's make stamps. Yeah. Let's lick stamps. Let's taste stamps. Like, let's just go. And it's like, man, there's no way I would have shown up to make all these things if I didn't love it. Dude. There's no way if I was making T-shirts, or cotton T-shirts in a, in, a, in a factory, I would be I worked so hard and made sure all my seams were correct. And there's no way because I love it so much. It's how that happens where you actually, and any artist that creates great shit, it's for love. It's not for much else, you know? No, nah, yeah. Generally. And, and for like, even for us, like for my band, we still make videos, man. We still, what kind of, what's your band called? Uh, my band's called playing dead. And we, we do like, uh, uh, it's kind of like a, I don't know if you know bands like Sam, I am or super chunk. It's just kind of like, a, it's like not punk enough to be punk, but not indie rock enough to be indie. You know, it's just, cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but we, we just, we, I love the visual. So I, I try to like push the visual part of it as Fresh, well. Yeah. Cool. um definitely i had we used the banana for a gun as well in one of the videos so right. <laughs> but it, it was only because we so like when when i was younger like my, my my house got raided by the dea shout out to them nice congratulations um, yeah thank you thank you um that was like 95 so like i did a, a video recreation of what happened you know when i was like 17 and like these uh, da's came and I, we didn't have guns so i was like all right let the dea hold the bananas and shit you're growing trees or are you doing Nah, I was uh, <laughs> a little bit heavier than that, you know, so it was oh. like, uh, you know, we, we, you know, we were just doing some crazy shit. And uh, as you should, as anyone should when they're young, bro. I was 17. I was like, the time you can get away with it in life. No one tells you that. They make you so scared about some false permanent record or something you have. But, bro, but get it done before it's 18, dog, because you could slap out a most fucking yes. stupid environment. Well, check it out. So, like, get it I, in. I, I went uh, I went to regular school, got kicked out of regular school. Then I got to night school and I got kicked out of night school. Nice going. Then I went to home tutoring, which is when they raided my house with my home tutor there. So I got Sick. black. I got black. Shout out to Mr. Wendell. <laughs> I Mr. Got Wendell probably still yeah. remembers it. Yeah, well, I, I don't. I'm sure he's not alive, but. <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah man it, it it was crazy and then i got blacklisted and then i had to do my gd and all that other shit but like, Black, but like two, from what oh from the school district uh so like i couldn't school. yeah so, yeah so i had to i had to like uh you know do my gd and all that yeah, other i'm doing shit. homeschooling with my children bro that whole that place is nothing right yeah i mean i, I was in a private school when i was a kid my parents I was like in third grade my parents got divorced and then sort of a uh, monetary reality hit my single mom and I went to a public school system that straight up felt like fucking, I'm still traumatized, I'm sure, from that shit. It felt like straight up jail, like in a foreign third world country, bro. That shit was crazy. I remember, it was too much for your podcast, you can mute this out, but I 
went to the bathroom to take a poop like a normal fucking third grader would in a normal type of environment. I was in there pooping and these kids came and kicked the door open and laughed at me. And I was like, what kind of environment did I get thrown into where I just can't poop like a human being? Yeah, what kind of shit? You can't, you can't, like, you could even shit in jail. Like, the times that, like, I remember (laughs) shitting in jail and, like, people were doing, like, like arm push ups next to me in the stall. Like, (laughs) it's, like, open. And I'm just like, even in there, but, like, I guess, I, does your podcast make merch and shit? Nah, we, we, we're like you could do like i remember shitting in jail shirts i'd get one of those <laughs> I, we might good one That's you know good we quote. this is like just kind of like a passion thing man like we love like like the music thing is more like my thing but like the the podcast thing is like like you know the people that we talk to are the people that i genuinely admire what they do like I had on the, the dude from like Ozzy's band the episode before or shout out to Rudy Sarzo. I had the director of like American Ninja on like, you know what I'm saying? Like shit like that. Hey, like, like, that's cool. Yeah. Like growing up with, with, with this stuff and, and, and the people, you know, that we're friends with that do cool stuff. And like for like you, I was just like, this dude fucking like makes amazing videos and a lot of cool stuff. And, and I mean, fucking I didn't even know that you did the 1999 video. That's wild. Yeah. Right? You know what? That's the video where I started to put my name on it because I directed I was in college when I made that. Okay. And they spelled my name. My real name is not spelled that way. I'll just put it like that way. There's a, there's a, a added, whatever. So they would spell my name wrong. They'd spell it gold watch. And I'd be like, these fucking assholes. I just spent two months killing myself and my name's wrong. And I'd be calling and then I'm this fucking 19 year old white boy trying calling BET like, I changed my name. You guys got my name wrong, right? Forget it, dude. You know? So like, how do I... <laughs> How do I how do I fix my hard work? You know, put your Bro, name on it, motherfucker. That's right. They do it in movies, dude. Yeah. They do yeah, it in the beginning it's... and the end in movies, you know? Yeah, it's it's fucking big as shit. But like 1999, I mean that record in particular, like we're talking about like the the um man, like the the whole West Side oh, crew. Yeah, no, but I'm saying we were talking about like, you know, like uh Hiro and to me, like at Blacklicious and, and that yeah. whole crew on the West uh, crew on the West Side. Yeah. But Sound bombing to me, like when this came out, this was like devastating. I'm like, holy shit, like everything on here. And, uh, you know, RA was on there. Shout out, you know, Long Island. Um, Dude, most yeah, deaf. I, I think that was the first time I tripped yeah. on most deaf hard. Oh, yeah. He, uh, Rockets, bro. Shout out Rockets. The, uh, damn, was he on the High and Mighty track? I don't even remember. I think that's what it was. What happened to those dudes? Where is High and Mighty? I had, um, I had, so right. I, used to, I used to do another podcast called If I Rule the World. And we, yo, that was a crazy show. I had on D, uh, Milo, the DJ. Yeah. So, um, and we we had on like I had on like Michael Alec. Remember the club kid? We had on. Uh, oh, that's cool. We had on uh, Michael Dowd, like that dirty cop from the Seven Five. You know. So I don't know who we, that is. I don't know who that is. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. that's why he was. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so like I talked to him. I reached out to him um, because I was like, "Yo, I love this High and Mighty record." And then we did an episode. I reached out to Razkaz. Razkaz was mad cool. Yeah. You know? um, but yeah, yeah man, I, 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 real quick, I, I also wanted to go back to Gang Green real quick because uh, Driving Gloves, that video. Yeah. Yeah, Holy yeah. shit. How much fun was that video? So much fun. Ridiculously fun. I regret we should have saved that car. That's so stupid. By the end of the day, we're just burnt. We just left it. Actually, that the lot where we shot it ended up buying the car off of us. Oh, shit. The second we left, I was like, was that stupid? Should we have hung on to that fucking thing? but yeah that was great that was fun but again that's just the idea that was a great example like yo i know if we get a car and get these idiots inside of the car with some weapons and some breakery shit and some pens and some paint whatever happens is gonna be amazing i just gotta make sure to time it out so that it doesn't get too messed up right off the bat but the beginning too i love like the the block lettering when they're driving through because like the beat yeah, yeah, yeah. the beat hits so hard and it almost yeah. reminded me of like the beginning to baby driver you see that edgar wright movie baby driver uh-uh Oh man, it's it's fucking it's pretty amazing, but uh yeah, it's just like that. And then you had fucking dirt nasty himself, Simon Rex in the video. Fast dude, funniest yeah, yeah. dude. Yeah, yeah, but there was a moment too that's like past, but there was a moment when I was cribbing like Simon would be there and like, uh, who's that fucking? I'm not gonna say the W word. Who's that dude? Uh, Riff Raff would be there and like, yes. uh. You know, maybe someone from Thailand, like maybe some Wolfgang. It was just like the funniest mixture of motherfuckers in there. Action. It was like, God, man, it's a real place. And sort of a lot of that work came out of that environment. It was just like super going, everyone going for it, being themselves and just like, you know, wilder yeah, and mischief. I mean, good point. The Wolfgang 
too, man. Like those those guys, like the Tyler crew, the Odd Future crew, fucking Bro. super. I mean, funny. That video too. We shot that with Pusha. Like we built a fake hotel room, and then I was like, all right, I'm gonna have these motherfuckers rip this room apart. You can't really lose. And that was I wouldn't say I was young, but they ripped the room apart. What? take it was over i was like oh my god you guys we had like five of these you guys totally destroyed our set we spent 20 grand you know yeah. that was a lesson in sort of taming the beast of uh of the talent or tyler i guess at that moment what's a good example of just like having a net you know and then just letting it just catch Let your fish go. and see what comes up you know yeah those kids you know like when they came out like i i, I it felt like a younger wu-tang and they all kind of did their thing you know and and uh i i remember we were out in south by southwest in 2011 and Odd Future was kind of like popping off. Das Racist was kind of popping off. Um, yeah, remember that? Remember? Yo, I love So I was trying to get in to see them. And it was all, you know, you couldn't get in. It was so packed. And then I saw the footage of like. And like Diant Word at that moment, probably, yeah. right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like and that was a great Ninja. moment. That was a great moment. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, and it's just, man, that's another group that I never got to see live. But I heard like the energy of like Diant Word is like bananas. But uh yo so yeah, south I, africa is such a crazy i love the the flip uh, of of gangrene for for the other one for sheet music because it's so like minimal that i was like this is yeah. brilliant right isn't it, it was yeah, just yeah. so brilliant to me you know like I you, just you, again man i love you i appreciate that so much but again it's just like man what would i want to see how can i take this one step further this time how can i make it so it's always unexpected not like you get it right you know i hate you know you turn to music videos eight shots but like don't show me those eight shots in the first 30 seconds bro like let me <laughs> give me a payout you know what i mean i don't know yeah 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 yeah. so i appreciate that i try and I always make it worth your time and i appreciate it. you know i was in a meeting recently and i was like dude you know what's the most expensive fucking commodity in the world right now i could challenge you to think about it for a second podcasters with your earphones what's the most expensive commodity in the world you know what's everyone trying to get a hold of i would challenge you to tell me or argue me against thinking that it's our attention span like yeah the super bowl commercials all this shit it's like bro you could look at it a hundred ways or the media the data they're buying but like you looking at something and giving your attention is the it's a, you have how much do you have 70 years so that minute bro it's getting down to like how much is that minute of your time worth and like i appreciate that so when i'm making something for someone where i expect i hope you can give me those three minutes i'm gonna make it worth you know i'm gonna try to make it worth it's so it's so true. That's why, like, like I, I've been trying to push like reels on Instagram because it's 30 seconds. And I feel like right. Instagram pushes reels because they're trying to yeah. compete with TikTok. And huh. I'm like, OK, so now I got to break up my music video for the band or like whatever live performance and just like hope that those 30 seconds is enough for, you know, what I'm saying like, so you're right. It's right. Like, let me get you 30 seconds real quick. Totally. And, and I'm appreciative, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And even you know, another thing on, on, on the uh, as far as like uh, bands go, like I stopped making full records. So in 2018, we put out our last full length and I was like, you know what? I see the streams at the end go down. I'm like, we're going to do five every six months. Yeah. And that's it. Yep. That's see? it. Because I'm, I'm doing a whole thing now. The cannabis company, we're setting up to do a whole brand new kind of thing. And it's like, exactly. Dude, like even the way the deals are set up, like you don't have you're not, we're not doing record deals. We're doing one offs that are interesting. Maybe it's four songs. Maybe it's one song that's related to a drop like everything keeps changing, man. And like people get stuck and that's when shit gets tired and dusty, man. It's like, you got, you got to yeah. ride with it. You know, you got to, you got to be pushed yeah. it in the back. It's like, you know, yeah. Yo, one last, one last thing. That, There's no rush that, dog. We're chilling. All right. Yo, the atmosphere thing, bananas. So, um, man, here's a group. I saw the first time I saw atmosphere was for the God loves ugly album, uh, uh premiere in, in the city. So they played the Knitting yeah, Factory cool. uh, with Aesop uh, Rock, not Aesop, Aesop right. Rock. Um, and from that moment on, I was like, yo, I'm like, I, I fuck with these guys heavy. Yep. Then it's just like, yo, Ant's a genius. Like, Ant, yo, like, both those dudes, 100%. But like, like production wise, like he's just yeah. like, if you see him, you're like, this dude looks like he's just like completely like a normal dude. But he, yeah. it's his mind is crazy. Yeah, it's loud like, inside of there. It's funny yeah. too how like soft spoken he is. I'm like, dude, I can't even imagine. Those are the ones, you know, the quiet one in the room in the back. I'm like, dude, you're the guy that's fucking doing you're something. You're the guy. Cool. You're yeah, the guy. for sure. Yeah, so he's great. They make this. Uh, it's like a half hour. The the record the day before Halloween. Yep. Um. So how do they approach you to do something for the whole thing? Right. That's what they probably did. Right. Well, you know, slug. God bless that man. That's one of my, I love that human being so much. And talk about a genius, right? So the sad genius, bro, hit me. And it was right when COVID hit. 
And we were all fucking, I was fucked up. I didn't know why the world was ending, to be honest with you. I still kind of do, but whatever. And he's like, listen, uh, actually, I think it was his label, to be honest. It was like, listen, we have a 44-minute uh, experimental atmosphere album that's mostly sin. I was like, I'm in. Whatever, you, whatever you're about to say next, I'm in, and just let me know how to be down. It was like, he was like, well, let's go for it. You know, Slug, again, is a great dude, knew about the work I've been doing, sampling and sort of carving out that strange path in terms of films fuck music videos but trying to make films like that so it's an opportunity where we're all locked in let us all be sad and scared and make something pretty cool you know and also talk about sampling like you know slug a great example him and Ant can go sit in a room right and they can make a song in a, in a couple hours about mars and the platypus people that live on mars and eat shrimp sky shrimp right I gotta go buy sky shrimp. I gotta build a Mars set. I, like the shit that I have to do to get the same effects that, that they can pull off sucks, dude. Especially because my friends are musicians and I'll see them just sit on their butts and make extraordinary shit. And I gotta go get permits and take a week and like yeah, re- release that where same I can day. Dig in and look, dog, right? But now that's the thing. I can listen to music and be like, ooh, I remember that one film that sort of in, it sort of falls in the same sort of context about emotional heartache and being isolated. What about space? Oh, you know, it sort of allows me to do that. And so they just gave me full on, just go. I disappeared for like two and a half months. Just came back and started giving them stuff. But man, that's a real. Do you yeah. want like, so when you give them this stuff, because it, it's it's really an interesting piece for sure. I love I love me some VHS stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm a kid that yeah. grew up with VHS. I, I, I'm yeah. a horror, horror fan to the t um so like when you start giving them the the stuff like are they like do you still want that kind of like approval or do you just say this is of course right well it's like fuck working with those dudes like bro that like for real i'm not just saying this like slug is a genius like that dude is is a is a modern like poetic poet fucking sad clown dude amazing and like you know cornerstone of a lot of the culture that's happening in my perspective right so to work with those dudes and be given the opportunity and know that his audience are going to come check me out for 45 minutes oh goodness fucking gracious bro like it was a little bit scary i don't want to say scary but i definitely made sure i was doing the right thing and took and was here my wife hated bro i was in here 12 14 16 hours a day digging and digging and digging and digging and digging and digging just you you dug man you dug and i'll tell you my favorite dig i gotta tell you because it, it felt so on point was the future is disgusting like, uh, like when that shit drops like it just made so much sense to me yeah like, it was very the, covid too it was so funny how that all lined right up, like that footage was like like I, it reminds me of like uh, that footage reminds me of like napoleon dynamite like when uh he uh i don't know if you've ever seen that movie right now of course, of course yeah yeah so like where he's like um Dequan's dance movie. like he found like this VHS tape that just like you're like I don't know what thrift store you found totally. this in totally. but it's like you, like when you, you know that, that movie came out and I, and I wasn't ready for it man I hated on that movie when it first came out I was like this is too much too much it's just too much for me and then looking back now it's so, so awesome it's it was a it was such a subtle movie that I know some people that didn't like it and to yeah. me like I just maybe because I I kind of knew people like that yeah, like I was just ready for it. Like it was subtle. It wasn't over the top. It wasn't like, it was just like these, these like, it was like under the radar type shit. Like it was when, when, weird. It was just so left. It's like, uh, what's that fucking guy? Harmony Korean. I really love. Like, oh, Momo to me, is so special. I felt like, man, it's like a, it's like a bootleg <laughs> Harmony. It just didn't work. But I just, I wasn't ready. It's like Outcast. Other albums, I'm not. I don't like it first. I'm like, you're stupid, bro. You need to study this right. shit. And then I, six I, months I, later, like my mind catches up to where they were. You know. You're not you're not gonna drop trash humpers on me, are you? Yeah, so I'm not ready sometimes for things, you know. Admittedly, yeah, because because like one day I rented uh, Harmony Kareen's trash humpers, and I was like, "What the fuck?" It, like, it's just, what are you doing, bro? It's just like ninety minutes of old people humping trash. Like I couldn't buy. Like I'm not defending it, all. Of, I'm not defending everything he did. I'm just saying, Gummo oh, really is a genius. Me. Yeah, Gummo is yeah. a shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gummo yeah. is like like when when we. Man, so when that clip ended up in Belly, I'm trying to think of where else that ended up. It ended up on a Joey Badass record. Fuck Belly, sorry. Yeah. No, I mean I don't. I, 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 so I hate everyone's like, Dude, I like, that's the worst fucking thing. That's a DP shot of movies. What it looks like. It's like, I never saw it, but the only reason I know it 
is because somebody was like, yo, this movie has gummo in it. <laughs> so I was like, I got to watch this. I mean, it's one of those things. It's like Space Jam. I never saw Space Jam. That was a bigger thing than I realized when I have. I never saw that shit. But Belly was a thing. It was like the first hip hop movie. We were all acting. I was like, okay, A, none of you motherfuckers can act. B, this shit looks incredible. It's a music video. C, like, oh, God, you guys, this is not how our culture should be. It's like a real, I felt like a cornerstone or sort of a flagship sort of moment in hip hop filmmaking. And I was like, oh, my God, talk about flopping short. I feel like people always reference it. Beautiful. Hype Williams, the guy, but he's yeah. more eyes, I think, than he is brain. I hate to say that on the fucking more internet. eyes, like more visual yeah. for sure. Yeah. But, but, but cool. that that was the time, though. Like when I think of like that era, the, the stuff that came out, like it wasn't really a lot of good stuff. Like when I think of like, yo, a, a hip hop movie that I, I feel uh, maybe it's not even really a hip hop movie. Like you ever see the whackness? No. Man, it's just like it, it was basically summer 94 in the city, a lot of hip hop stuff, but uh. Man, it's it just it was just that place and time for for the hype stuff and and like you said, visually, like he's very yeah. good at, at, at well, that dude, stuff. Let me not let me set it straight because Hype Williams is one of the fucking forerunners of this whole entire thing. And like when I got into music videos, he was one of the reasons because like wow, dude, like that's what I wanted. Like that's incredible. And telling stories visually was, was so incredible. And you know what? That piece of shit. Let me take it back the other way. Had a million dollars every time. Bro, if you don't make something beautiful, a million dollars, I'm gonna slap you in the back of your neck, bro. What, like, what would you do with a million if you had it for a video? But make a hundred fucking films, dog. These idiots. You know what I mean? Oh my god, I don't know. A million dollars, we make something crazy. I mean, you know, it's almost like I don't think if you don't. It's like it's almost a waste. You know I mean, I just on this shit the other day. I was like, man, shame billionaires. These idiots. These monsters. Like, I don't even think you need a million dollars to make a film. No, you definitely don't need a million dollars to make a music video. You're just wasting someone's. You're just wasting kids in Africa's food. Like, you might as well give that shit back. Like. Yeah, you're doing with a million dollars. I don't know, not no, not no but I mean, but, but I mean, like back then. I mean, now it's like I, the technology is like. I mean, I, I, I like the last video we had. We had a fucking drone, and we're idiots. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Right? But drone, drones look good. Totally. You know, crazy like, aerials. Like, yeah, bro. Like, back in the day, check this out. Back in the day, a director got ten percent of whatever the music video budget was, just off the top. So fuck, I edit my own shit. I shoot a lot of it. So that's extra. But let's just say I'm directing. I get ten percent of whatever the budget is. Hype, uh, Romualdo Ramirez Williams, bro, got a ten, got a hundred thousand dollars off the top for a million dollar video. Bitch, right. that makes me so upset. But that's why I was like, wow, I can go do one a month and be like the richest. What? You know? Yeah, one a, one a year almost, probably. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> that's over. That whole that thing's gone. So no, but I know, and and also you did like you came up with Spike Jones. Like that's kind of like a big fucking deal too, right? Yeah, like, bro. Right? I wouldn't so, say I came up with him. I wish I did, but he was an idol to me, and I eventually signed up to his company. And I still hold on to that man. It's a big thing. Yeah, that's probably my favorite filmmaker, Spike Jones. Yeah, you talk about a talent. Talk about a mind, bro. Yeah, but so it was like satellite films, right? In my yeah, right out. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was a that was a crazy moment for me. It was another moment in life which I encourage you all to feel, but like. That was a big L too, because I signed up and then fucking those maniacs crashed those buildings down. Depends who you're, who you think I'm talking about, where you are, but those buildings fell and the economy changed and that whole place closed. And I was like, man, that was really a moment where I thought I had reached a, a stasis, like a balance in life where I was, I was pretty much okay. And it that just was, all fell away. Wow. That's, that's interesting. I didn't know that yeah. that was the same time. Yeah. That, that'll pull the rug. Um, the real quick another thing that you did you did something for a rock band uh blink 182 man so yeah, hell yeah. I, re I really like so so the concept was basically what just them filming stuff it was for the song uh, uh home is such a lonely place yeah uh, i mean what i gather was just the video of them just filming themselves and then you you put it together yeah, well trav and i are homies and it was sort of a thing where again i'm like all right well, let's look at this rock band like i don't want to see them on stage anymore you know, I, I think what's interesting is maybe what they're doing in the bathroom or like, what does Travis do? Like, that's what I'd want to see real intimacy. And I think I've, I'm given a pass. You know, it's a good example by a rock group because of the intimacy. I'm somehow able to capture the relationships I have with people that come through on the film or whatever. So that was a moment of me and Travis talking. I was like, man, I'll film it. But let's just go like, what do you do? Let's just do the same day. Let's just have you guys all do the same day. Do you walk your dog in the morning? Do you get coffee? Whatever you do in the morning, let's do that. And then however you prep, you know, it's just a matter of setting up, again, a safety net of morning middle afternoon lunch evening 
family, you know, a bunch of things, and then just getting it together and showing how so they're all the same person in different respects. And yeah, and, and, is, and, and such a, yeah. such a such a contrast from like you know like the the jokey shit that they do. Yeah, you know, totally, like, exactly, and that's long serious. That's a, you know, especially now with what's going on in terms of the cancer and all shit inside of that group. Fuck, man, it's like that's a special video. I can't. I mean, dude, I haven't gone back to watch it, but I know I that, will. I'm not, you, know. you always want to pull for someone, you know, and it's like I feel like you know, like when MCA died, you know, like I feel there's certain people who like I do, I grew up with, you know, and it's yeah, like, yeah. Uh, I I wish Mark the best. Obviously, we all do. So you you. There's certain people like he, because even like like I was like 16 or whatever when Kurt Cobain died, it wasn't really that big of a deal to me because yeah, yeah. I only had him for like three years mentally. But like fucking MCA, I'm like, yo, yeah, I'm like I grew up that. with this guy. Yeah, dude, I fucking grew up with that. this guy. You know what fucked me up though about the Beastie Boys? I want to put this out there because those dudes really did raise me and and licensed to ill change my life and check your head really affected my life greatly at that moment. Yeah, wow. And then I went and saw their live. Did you see their live thing on Broadway or whatever? Came out the book. They're like a live show. No, but I saw that the one on Apple, like the, the thing that they it's did. It's like they it really took it back and they didn't own a lot of what they did. And they weren't like, damn, we were young and wild. They were sort of like, well, they made it. It was like, oh, okay. You know, it makes going back to those albums different now. You know? It makes it like this little bit of, of a tinge of like a little, a little regret or something in there that's different. I don't like that, man. Like, you guys, bro. I don't know. I'm just putting that out there. That does. Uh, yeah, just what, so you, you're saying, like, for them to just kind of like just own it and be like, "Hey, this is what it was." Type it's shit. not to own it. You guys are the Beastie Boys. You're not like fucking uh, the Tibetan soul children or whatever. Dude. You guys are the wild ones. Like, yeah. Don't sleep till Brooklyn, dog. Like, yeah. oh, we were we were pretty tired at the time. We should have probably gone to sleep on our way. Like, dude, fuck, come on. You know. You know what's Brooklyn, funny? We we're actually sleeping. So that first record, maybe because you're like you're two years older than me. That first record probably was a little bit bigger in your life. For me, it wasn't until like. Well, I found it late. I mean, I, I was like 86, I think. Like, I was fucking 10. Like, I didn't hit me until later, but like, just those samples again. And even in a Paul oh, Boutique. The samples, yeah. You know, and that was before. Yeah, Paul Boutique was before. That sort of triggered a lot of the sample rules and shit. So they were really just going crazy, which I feel like, man, this is arrogant. I regret saying this before I do, but like, there's a period right now where I'm doing what they did, where I'm just sampling the shit out of everything and like, fuck, until you tell me not to, bro. You know? Yeah, you're right. Cause like that that Pulse Boutique shit, man. Shout out to the Dude, Dust that's like Brothers. every great loop every, in the history yeah. of loops. Yeah, man. They just yeah. did it. Same thing with like they... like De La Soul with uh, three feet high and rising. That's why they yep. they they got fu- they got burnt too though. I don't think they made any money off of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. And De La Soul's dead too. That one changed my life. Yes. And and uh I mean those records. And it's funny because like the one that everyone seems to dislike, Balloon Mind State, that's like my shit. Yeah, it's funny. They're yeah. special. They change so much, man. It's tough. You know, I shot a Lincoln Park video. Did you ever see that shit where I shot this Lincoln Park? I didn't. We shot a Lincoln Park remix with Cutmaster Kurt. Oh, man. I love the Kurt Cutmaster. Right, right, right. But again, another one who's passed and another moment in history where it's like, damn, Lincoln Park, man, that was really a thing. It yeah. was sort of observably, observably corny at some point, and then it changed again. I go back and listen to the album I did with Jay-Z. It's like fucking phenomenal, dog. Like some of those songs yeah. were really insane. Yeah. Because there's another fans. rock group where I was like, all right, let's do something different. I took a um again, sort of like the intimacy, but we I was like, he was I was way too young to be shooting that dude at that moment. And I was like, listen, here's what we're gonna do. I'll pull up your crib in a limo, you get in, we'll whip around for an hour, and I'll drop you back off at home. It's the easiest shoot you've ever done. And inside the limo, I got a security system with four cameras and put the monitor there, and we shot 16 millimeter film off the monitor, and then we had four video monitors four video cameras moving around the inside of this limo. And that was basically the, the safety net was like, I'll chop, I'm an editor, right? So I'll cut the hell out of this in between all these cuts and cool shit. It's gonna be four things, yeah. you know? Yeah, that's awesome. But again, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got, I got to watch that. I, 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 I didn't, I didn't, I didn't see that one. I didn't see the, the Jay-Z one, but like when I went into your, your, you know, you gave me the, the code for the, um, was it your Vimeo? And I was like, oh, I, I like, I just, I didn't even want to like, I just watched that one thing. And you told me you were cut, cut my dick off if I watched. You're like, yeah, bro, you're like, no, I'm, I'm, like gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna count the clicks. I was like, let me just watch this one thing and just take it from there. <laughs> yeah, count the clicks. I'll duff your dick, bro. Yeah, Don't send yeah, this yeah. In. And you were like, what's but, what? Yeah, stock? man. There's a lot of stuff on there too. I mean, there's a Post Malone video I've done that's never dropped. There's like weird shit in there. I just, I just what? be careful what's on there. But so is is the post thing like unreleased? Is it gonna drop or not? It's just does. Well, here's a little secret about the music video world. You get paid to make something and then it has to get approved. And sometimes that doesn't go the way you wished it was. Or 
Sometimes they get tattoos that change something or, you know, anything you can imagine. That video was a lump getting into it. It came out pretty good. And then like a week later, I mean, well, I'm like, whatever. A week later, this dude tights fucking always tire on his face and changes his whole look and things change. I would like to believe that's what happened. I'm not totally honest to be sure. Like that dude is not really in my camp as much as I liked working with him. Like I can't call him and be like, the fuck's the matter with you? Let's go. Let's change. Let's like, let's go. Yeah. yeah. So this weird thing. It fell away. I kept it. And then there's a remix. I don't know. It just sits on my Vimeo right now. Like, I don't know, maybe in 20 years when he dies, I don't know what the fuck to say, but like I hit his manager. Like, can I, can I put this on my Instagram? He goes, dude, if that comes out, just please just sit on it for now. I'm like, All right, well, fair enough. I mean, dude, I got paid, yeah, I- you know? I, that that part of like the the game is so interesting to me. Like the, the it's business wild, side. bro. Yeah, what it's about like, the J Electronica film? I'm sitting on a fucking 45 minute film we shot all over East Europe, Dubai and Nepal, and like, man, I watch that once a year and just be proud of myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so just I mean, sitting. Yeah, I, I I feel like eventually those things like come out and stuff, but like like you said, it's well, like, just it's let like, me get drunk enough. I feel like if I get drunk enough one night, I may just fucking let loose, dude. You know. <laughs> yeah just say someone uh took your uh twitter account again man yo i did a video actually to this point i did a video with kendrick and schoolboy that um oh i love break the bank break the bank's crazy. okay so we did break the bank and then we did another one which i'm gonna blow the name up which is them together and that didn't get approved and then some fucking guy we colored it and finished it and then one of the colorists this is when we shot film so the colorist who we found out later the colorist who actually transferred the film leaked the video but schoolboy hit me like yo motherfucker like really hood check my shit like are you dropping yeah you know, and i was like yeah i would never and it took us a minute to find out where it came from and it was on reddit and this fucking uh colorist had leaked it but like yo it's big it sucks when it happens because it's pretty much up to you it's like your show you know yeah 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 yeah. That's, that was really that's, out of my that was out of my out of my range that's a that's a crazy g check for sure but yeah like break the bank was one of those videos you know what it is too is that song that song is just yeah, like so good so you know my complaint is that's like nine minutes that was the hardest lump to take i was like bro you guys want me to make a six minute fucking film like woo, you know evidence god bless his soul is like bro that's incredible work if you cut back to that girl dancing one more fucking time you know like giving me the real she gave me the real truth but that was a hard one because it's so long it was like yeah. five and a half minutes it's like it's yeah it's like it's like a few seconds shy of six minutes dude stuff. spare us <laughs> yeah i mean like I listen to it twice dog I'll cut it in half i'll, I'll loop it yeah, like, give me a break sometimes sometimes you know sometimes people throw in that third verse and you're like yeah yeah wah, totally you know <laughs> i mean when you play it live you never the only people who who play their all their verses when i see them live is run the jewels everyone else is like uh, like run the jewels will do the, their whole song Everyone else will do like the you know the verse and the hook and then the next. I one. love those human beings. That's a group I wish I did a, a video with them and Travis, but it was with Travis video featuring on the jewel. So I don't think that counts. I'm gonna fuck with those dudes. That's why yo, I, I regret not working with the BC Boys before MCA left, and I want to work with Run the Jewels uh, seriously before that ends or whatever. Run the Jewels, mind blowing. So like growing up, like I was a big Company Flow fan. Yep. Fo- followed LP into everything that he did. Right. Another um, true genius, by the way, producing for himself, which is insane. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, and it's just like I, I had on Vast Air from Cannibal Ox. He did that record. Totally. And like, that was what a like, moment. Yeah, yeah. Na- yeah. But like so watching him go and I remember like them hitting. So him, you know, LP doing like the, the, the Def Jux stuff. And like I saw it on the downslide. I went to go see him one night at Irving Plaza and it just wasn't. Uh-huh. Them, as many people huh. that's weird. I didn't know that. yeah yeah like so they were like uh, it was for uh a cure for the cancer like it was just kind of like this thing where like i think he was on the downswing so i kind of like um didn't really even pay attention to run the jewels when the first record came out huh. that's funny and my, and my friend i felt like, like i found that album i took that one so personal when the album came out i was like this is mine i, I love these motherfuckers and actually that led us to getting them onto mass appeal we put a mass appeal album out with them and what was the run the cat? What was that cat? We did the stupid ass. Did you uh, see that? Meow, meow, meow the jewels. Meow the jewels. We did that. Like I'd made a video for that shit. I guess that counts uh, actually. Now that I think about it. Yes, listen. That, like Mass Appeal's work is like I mean, I, hopefully it's named after the Gangstar song. You know, I would imagine. Well, it's under that magazine, which is yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, that that's one group. Like Run the Jewels is like I mean, they put out four records, and and arguably the last record they put out is the best record that they put Those out. Those dudes. I mean, I'm a huge LP fan before and Killer Dude Dungeon Family forever. Like that shit was it's just so great to see that. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very happy. Um, so I'm, I'm going to ask you just one last question. Um, and, you know, out of all the work that you do, uh, when do you think you'll ever make a movie? I, think I don't know. That's a good question. A feature movie? I think these are all movies to me. I mean, a feature? No, I mean, just like line. one day, like, do you have like any any uh, interest in like... I do. Action? I do I have some horror things that got down a funny path and didn't go. I mean, being a director is so hard, dude. And it's like, I was born in California, so I just take it for granted. But motherfuckers yeah, come here yeah. trying to be a director. Like, yeah, bro, yep. fuck, bro. So everyone's coming for my spot. So I'm trying my best. I mean, I have a horror film I'm trying to make. There's a comedy about Bigfoot I'm doing. I mean, there's a bunch of cannabis stuff that's catching up. And I feel like the cannabis industry out here is sort of with the legalization of that flower became a lot of normal, a normalizing of the, of the culture and of the magic and sort of the mystique and the, and the mysteriousness of that whole world. So it's really fallen flat. So there's a lot of cannabis companies out here right now um, trying to find a voice and, and hiring a lot of creatives and friends of mine and people that exist like, you know, uh, whatever P people that are in high positions that aren't necessarily known for that are getting hit up to be like yo will you come be creative for some dough over here at a cannabis company because we are not we can't crack this code you know um i forget how we got here oh but i think there's a thing where like they're gonna start funding some of these things that just make no sense other than you know fuck man where's the stoner content I, when i went to cal arts i was in my freshman year and there's a television station there called channel eight and it was run internally and it was in the library and it was in your dorm room and it was everywhere playing just closed circuit television, but it was the coolest shit in the world. And it closed my, it shut down because of lack of funding my first year. And I raised money and brought it back and ran the TV station for three years at CalArts. So having come out of that and being feeling like almost a video DJ, like a VJ, like you're sort of, you know, uh, curating someone Saturday night sometimes because you're just going to let shit loop or whatever. So that experience led me to, I'm pitching this whole, television station where it's going to run 24 hour content for stoners and when you buy that bag you scan that qr and get to our station for that kind and like laugh and cry and see all this weird shit let me post some shit then come out like all that man like you know i feel like if anyone could do it i feel like it's you man you and the team like you you guys uh you know you guys seem to move some mountains you know um and and, and you mentioned horror so just out of curiosity like if you could pick three horror movies that that have impacted your life what Fuck. would they be the Shining, for sure. I don't even think it's a horror film. It's just pure magic. It's terrible. It's terrifying, but yeah. uh, horror. I fucking hate horror films. I think we manifest our own reality. I mean, I don't know. We're going to get off this podcast, it seems like, soon, but I am a genuine believer, and this sounds like bullshit, and I just found this recently, and I swear to God on my son's soul, I think that we control our reality, and actually what we believe ends up influencing what happens. And I think Schroeder, you can get into the cat and the box, the whole shit, but I'm telling you, bro, you can make decisions that are off, that are left field type left decisions that break you from the momentum of the way things flowing and it puts you into a different reality a different zone a different place of possibilities that's real as fuck and if anyone walks away from this podcast one thing and we're an hour in or whatever just please believe that like prayer i got convinced that prayer was corny i got convinced that that's fake and the shitty things that all these religions did to other human beings made it okay for me to believe that that was fake but don't call it prayer don't call it meditation, but your mind, I swear to God, it, it affects the, the reality of how things occur when they come towards you from the future. And like, I believe so much in that. And I'm still learning about that, but that's the most valuable lesson. So when I get into horror, I'm not really, I don't like the fact that I'm, people are trying to scare other people or, or even like building that louche or like creating that negative vibrations. I'm not with that. Unfortunately, the genres tend to get funded first and I come up with some dark shit because I'm scared of everything yeah. and I can I make horror films. I don't want to, you know, but no, no, those affect right. me, man. When I saw, uh, what was that fucking camping one that changed all of our lives? Uh, Blair Witch, bro. I, so a girl handed me that VHS cassette at Cal Arts and told me, and had no stickers. She's watched this with, with a bunch of people. Just trust me. I trusted her. She's a beautiful oh, Blair writer. Witch, Blair Witch, yeah. You, Blair Witch that? Project, you know about that? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, so bro, I went home with five of my friends, Pop that VHS and I was shook, dude. The some of the pizza guy came knocking on the door. We all jumped. It was like the scariest experience. Looking back, it doesn't hold up because where we are now. But like, no, because you that know, effect yeah. is really fear is such a strong thing. But you comedy too, man. Know. I'd rather laugh. It's harder to make someone laugh, I think, than anything else. It is. I can it make is. you cry before I can make you laugh. You know what I mean? It's like so to me, that's more challenging. No, and no a better yeah. a better reward. Better reward for sure. And and it's like yeah, man. A, a good comedy is like like I, so I was thinking. Hard. Yeah, like I was thinking about like the last time that like I like almost died laughing in a movie theater, and right, uh, forever. it was pr probably like Bruno, you know, like Sasha well, Baron Cohen, you know, yeah. and they're like naked wrestling or like uh, 
Yeah, yeah incredible. It's, it's, Jackass, it's, it's, I remember it really made me belt out laughing when I first saw it. Which one? Jackass. Oh, yeah. Yo, the new trailer looks uh-huh. bananas. Yeah, it's pretty funny. Yeah, that's pretty funny. But yeah, yeah, listen. Um, Thank you for, for your time, man. Thank you so much. Well, I appreciate for, it, dude. Yeah, thank you for just saying yes. You know, obviously, you don't know me from Oh, of course, wall, dude. So. If you're listening to a podcast and you have one out there, hit me up, dude. We'll talk about all kinds of shit. Let's get weird. Again, yeah, yeah. I swear to God, you control your reality. I sound like a jackass. I promise you. Just do a little thing. I Just, bro, hear me. I wish someone had told me. You know, people are like, whoa, some advice. I don't know, dude. I just slipped through the cracks, bro. I'm a weirdo. But, like, that. Well, I can tell you what. That shit is real, dog. And, like, I'm just learning about it. Don't call it prayer. You, the universe responds, dude, when you try to talk to it. That's the best way I can tell you about it. Like, eat some mushrooms if you need to. But, like, man, she's really listening, dude. I promise you. I'm on mushrooms now. Are you? Yeah. Oh. I haven't done anything in, like, 22 years. But you I, should. I, I, I don't care. Yeah, to me, like, you you, you know, people do whatever they want. I don't, I, I'm, you know, I'm, yeah. I, eat, I eat too much. That's my problem. Eat mushrooms instead. <laughs> yo jason man yo i can't wait to uh see what you do next and uh i'm looking forward to thank you so much you're in new york yeah man long island new york and when i'm out there and this fucking and this war goes away let's get a beer dude yeah for sure i'm down jason thank you i appreciate it so much yeah i'm gonna put this out monday and you know when i do i'll I'll hit you up via instagram man thank you for yeah i'll promote it the whole night thank you appreciate it shout out to all your fans everybody Later, buddy. Peace. Straight up. Totes. Tote that. Fuck sales on the road to getting rich off a of torrent. That's one thing for sure, like a shit in the morning. Shit. Never a cold toilet. Never. I need a bitch with a pussy like a literally glove. I'm the epitome of all fly shit. Jacket to the shoe sole. Two shooters. Flanagan Caruso. Irish. Fly girl stuff the drug in a caboose hole. I see Bronson in the chartreuse coupe mo. My eyes sparkle like a diva's mirror. Make dice reconsider how they fishing in the river. Meet your sister sitting shiver. Vegas catered. Locks. No socks. Blue trap. Spanish bitches on the boardwalk, tube top Old school shit, nothing in a tube sock Safe to say you ain't much without your crew hop My time is now like a new watch, it's me